pretty people, if you have ever felt like there's just something missing in my doll collecting life, I just don't know what it is. I'm gonna tell you right now, I know what it is. And you're right, something has been missing. And that something is me, Gypsy. Why are you not subscribed? Why do you not know who I am? You should know me. When your other doll collecting friends say, you know how Gypsy was talking about X, Y, and Z? You should not be saying, Gypsy who? I don't know who that is. What is you talking about? No, my friend. You should be saying, I do know exactly what you're talking about and who you is talking about. And I do or don't agree with Gypsy. You should be saying, that's my girl. That's my homie. That's my boo. Or I can't stand her. She talk a lot. She's so weird. She's so strange. But either way, you should know me. So, if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Also, identify yourself in the comments, boo-boo, because I'm trying to get to know air one of y'all, all right? I know it looks like I have a lot of subscribers, whatever the hell that means. And honestly, I haven't been active on my channel for a long time. I had to take multiple mental health breaks. So I do go on hiatus at some point while I'm doll tubing, but I always come back. When I take really long breaks, which this is probably like the longest break I've taken in a while. When I take really long breaks, my subscribers go dormant and then it's like, you know, they forget that I exist until they realize, oh, she's still alive and then they'll come back, you know? So while they're taking their nap, I like to, you know, get to know the new subscribers who help us to build our community over here. And this space is specifically for adults who like to collect dolls of all sizes, all kinds, even those weird ones with the creepy eyes and all the strange makeup that look like they're gonna come out and get you on Halloween, but you just got them up all year round for some reason. Even those guys, you're welcome over here. And this is where we like to talk about customizing our dolls and what we love about our dolls, what we hate about our dolls. We just like to vent about all of our doll thoughts in the comment section, even if your comment has nothing to do with the topic of the video, this is your safe space to do that and feel free to comment along with other people, jump into conversations with other people, and get advice from other people who leave really good tips. You guys, read my comment section. People give such great tips on how they care for their dolls and do different things with their dolls. So that's what we're all about over here, and I'm pretty goofy, so don't take me too seriously. I just like to laugh and joke around a lot. So today is the day, I This is for my Sisters and brothers, we're gonna talk about braids. We're gonna talk about protective styles. We're gonna talk about twists. We're gonna talk about all of that. And no, I don't believe that when people who aren't black do black hairstyles on their dolls that it's cultural appropriation. I think it's ridiculous. And I also don't believe that your dolls that aren't black should not be able to wear these hairstyles just because they don't have a certain skin tone. I think that's malarkey. And we don't do that over here. And if you're going to shame people who like to try out different hairstyles on their dolls because you think it's somehow culturally appropriating, this is not the space for you. That's crazy. I don't condone racism of any kind at all. Let me just make that clear before I start talking about these dolls. I've run into so many collectors, even other doll tubers who have come to me and asked me my take on this. And those of us who are sane in the black community, we know that's ridiculous. We didn't invent braids, you guys. We just popularize them. Other cultures wear braids too. Other cultures have twists. The same kind of hairstyles that we wear, it's just not as prevalently known or as popular as it is in our culture. So maybe people think that we own these hairstyles, but I, I think it's so weird when people try to gatekeep their culture while also saying, diversity, everybody matters, recognize me, and I wanna be in the spotlight. If you want people to recognize your culture more, you have to deal with the fact that people are gonna copy the things that you do because they think it's cool. For example, I'm a Korean person. Everybody's into kimchi now. Everybody knows what bulgogi is. I'm not gonna get mad at you because you cook it for dinner for your family and be like, oh, you're culturally appropriating. Stop eating my culture's food. What? That's ridiculous. Don't listen to K-pop music because that's our music. What is you talking about? Most K-pop is a copy of American black rap music. You know, it's just so ridiculous. So I feel like if your culture gets bigger and, and more seen, then clearly the good things about your culture will get, will get copied. I don't see people saying, oh, stop gangbanging because that's a black thing. 
Nobody wants to claim that, you know? <laughs> Let's not do that with the good things about our culture when you see other people are adapting them or we made it cool so they're copying it. It's okay. Copy it. I know, we fly like that, right? Yeah, so I just wanted to put that out there to make sure that we have no misunderstandings over here. Everybody's getting their due shine, you feel me? As long as you're not taking credit for certain things, I don't have a problem with you doing it. You feel me? That all just respects the culture. So let's go over to the dolly station and take a look at these dolls. And you let me know if this is something that you want to try with your own dolls or have been doing with your own dolls and how it's working out for you. So first we're going to take a look at Sharia here who is fashionista's number 24 crazy for coral. And she has a skipper head mold. This doll, boy howdy, her hair, okay, in the promo shots, her hair looks like this. It looks very tame, it looks very manageable, it looks just normal. When I actually got the doll, her hair looked more like this. So in some of these pictures, they're not my pictures, these are pictures I found on the internet of other people's uh, version of this doll. And as you can see, the doll's hair is much bigger out of the box than she is in the promo pictures. This is something you have to keep in mind when you buy dolls, that sometimes the promo shots look so different than how the dolls actually look in person. A lot of times they put a lot more detail into the promo dolls than they do the actual mass-produced doll. But in her case, I didn't realize the hair was gonna be so much bigger and different than what the pictures made her look like. I don't have a problem with big hair, but my issue with her big hair on her little petite body, because I did rebody her since then, at the time she was on a little petite body and her hair took up like half the length of her body. She has a lot of hair on her head, it's very thickly rooted and it was so difficult for me to manage her hair. Every time I tried to style this doll's hair, it just felt like it was in the way all the time and it was frustrating me. So finally I just gave up and decided I was going to braid up all of her hair. I gave her a bunch of box braids and as you can see the braids curl at the ends. I didn't make that happen, it's just it just does that by itself. But this is basically how the hair turned out. To me, the doll's hair is a lot more manageable in these braided styles. I can style her hair as if it's in a regular loose condition, even with the braids in there. And I do think that this doll came with a pre-parted hair, like right here. This is where the hair splits, the way that they rooted the doll's hair. Let's take a look at her scalp. So in an idle state, you can't really see her scalp. It looks pretty full and it looks good. Obviously, if I split the hair, you're gonna be able to see her scalp all throughout, which is pretty normal when you braid up a doll's head that didn't already come with a bunch of braids in it. It's just something that you're gonna have to deal with. Baby hairs, I drew on, she didn't come with those. To do braids about this thickness and length, I think it took me maybe one or two hours to do this. And generally that's about how long it's gonna take if you wanna do really small braids. So this is something that you're gonna wanna do when you have a lot of time to kill and you can just like watch your favorite TV show while you're doing it. It's kinda like a mindless thing that you wanna be doing, you know? All right, the next doll I wanna show you guys is one of our favorite characters on my doll show when I used to have my little Broken Barbie show here. So some of you guys already recognize this doll. This is Sierra, or Riley, as her sister Reagan sometimes calls her just to get under her skin, because Sierra hates being called by her first name. Anyway, if you know, you know. Sierra over here, she is originally this doll. I don't know what the name of this doll is, you guys. You tell me if you recognize this doll. She's, she used to be a fashionista's doll, and this was before the fashionistas all had like designated numbers, so they were going by the features of the doll, like the dress they were wearing, like the clothes that they were wearing or the features that they had. And I just can't remember off the top of my head which one this was. Anyways, I feel like she went by like a bunch of different names, but this head sculpt we call Nikki, AKA Desiree. I honestly cannot remember. And these dolls, obviously they came with open mouth smiles. You could see the teeth, which I freaking hate. Like this head sculpt specifically, I hate when the teeth are showing. It makes the whole head look so huge. And she already got a big head to begin with. So I had to close their lips up. But I did both of them slightly different because they're supposed to be twins and I wanted them to be able to be told apart from each other. This is how they turned out. So her original hair was like this. Of course, it's beautiful. I, it's like one of my favorite things about this doll was the hair. Now, mind you, Reagan over here it was looking a hot mess because I didn't actually style her hair for this video. I just threw her on here kind of last minute and she's got crazy, crazy box hair right now. So ignore that. 
but like her curls are just so luscious and big and huge and her hair is big and I just love that look on this doll but again I didn't really want two dolls in my collection at the time that looked exactly alike even though they're supposed to be twins I don't know about you guys did you guys notice that with th this particular doll there was like two versions of them like if you look closely her freckles are actually a lot easier to see than hers. I don't know why. They just manufactured them that way with darker and lighter freckles printed on. Her hair was like way more bigger than her hair was initially. Her hair was a lot more like relaxed looking even though it was so curly. It wasn't as big and poofy as this one was. So I just thought that was so strange that they had two different textures almost to the hair. The way that the hair sat on the doll. It was really weird. I liked the, the voluminous look that she had better and for the characters that I was creating with these two. They're the identity crisis twins on my show. Twins who completely hate each other for no apparent reason. Wait, what race are they supposed to be anyway? New from Mattel, it's Identity Crisis Barbie. <laughs> well, they're actually biracial, and I just think the, the tension of the relationship is what really would sell the idea. I think Colonizer Ken has a really good idea. We should develop these characters. How about? Um, sis. Uh, what's going on with you and that football player guy? He's so aggressive. What about Jason from the chess team? He seems like really, really rich. So, I, I don't know. I just feel like you can do better. You're making us look bad. Uh, Reagan, I don't really mess with them stupid ass bum niggas that you be messing with. I like a thug. Somebody who sells drugs. He got cocaine. Oh, that's just gross. Like, every time he's around, I feel like, uh, being impregnated. Every time he stares at me, it doesn't help that we look exactly alike. Listen, girl, he don't want you. He want me. I feel like he's Stealing my ovaries. You ain't got to worry about that because he like ride or die bitches. And that's me. I'm a ride or die bitch. You just a die bitch. Ew. Like, can I have my ovaries back? Sierra's character here is supposed to be the twin that's like too overly into her black side racially, but like over the top, you know? And then she's the complete opposite. She's way too into her white side and totally ignores the black side. So they're both basically like the extreme opposite of one another. So I thought that it would be cute for this character to have box braids because she just feels like having a braided hairstyle puts her more in touch with her blackness. This fine luscious curls she just felt like no you're just trying to be white get out of my face it just suits this character for her to have the braids uh, not so much because it was hard to manage or anything like that but I just wanted to see what it was gonna look like and as you can see because her hair does naturally have the curls in the hair she, all her ends curled up like this on their own. I didn't actually braid her hair all the way down to the ends. I just did it halfway. Her hair's been like this literally for years. Very, very good condition. Because she has so much hair on her head, you know, when I move the braids around, it's very difficult to see her actual scalp. And it looks like this doll does have a side part already rooted into the head so that's where the hair splits over here on the side this hair is so well behaved i just i love it like this so i do have basically two versions of this doll and they're two of my favorite dolls even though i hate this head sculpt is that crazy this is like one of my least favorite head sculpts ever but i love these characters that we created they have so much personality and i love dressing them to reflect their personalities it's really fun they're like total opposites of each other so it's like really fun playing around with these characters so here is Betty and she is the fashionista's number 93 with a skipper head sculpt and a tan skin tone. Originally, I think she had a big afro puff and I think she was also on a petite body if I'm not mistaken. Man, oh man, oh man. In the promo shots, the hair looked a certain way. In the box, the actual dolls that were on the shelves, the hair was so much bigger, like two times bigger than it looked in the promos. And I was like stunned. And this doll does have an actual afro texture hairstyle. So it's not like, you know, big curls like this that's just poofed out into an afro shape. It's literally very, very tight curl, coily, coarse. I'm finding all these C words to alliterate, but that's an accident. But anyways, it's got that actual coarse hair texture. It is soft though, very soft and manageable, but the way it looks is very authentic to an actual afro hair texture. Her hair was just ginormously big. I did attempt to give her different hairstyles when it was in the afro texture, 
But it was so difficult for me. I just couldn't make anything work. Everything looked like her head was just huge. Like it just made her whole head look big. And none of the looks seemed to suit the doll's face, in my opinion. So I just got super overwhelmed, so bored with the hair. Obviously, I'm not about to reroute all her hair. So at the time, I think I had not actually attempted to put twists in my doll's hair myself. So I tried it out on her. So it was totally an experiment just to see what it would look like with twists. Overall, I'm not really satisfied with this doll's hair as of yet. I still feel like something about it is a little bit off. Just, I don't know, doesn't 100% suit her look. So I'm still deciding if I want to keep it like this or if I want to unravel the twist and try something different. I think maybe the first thing I'm going to try is to take these twists down and just try to style her hair with the curly wavy texture that these twists would have changed her hair into. And as you can see, like towards the ends of her hair, I couldn't really get the twist twist all the way down to the ends because they're very like straggly down at the bottom of the hair. I almost feel like snipping them at those points to make them look more neat. But because I haven't decided if I want to keep her hair like this or not, I haven't bothered to actually do that. But I do think it would look neater if I cut it. I just, I couldn't make up my mind about what I wanted to do with her hair. I just know it's a lot more manageable in the twist than it was in the original Afro puff that it came in. The texture of this hair is just really stiff. So it doesn't really want to like lay down. It just kind Kind of wants to fly all over the place that really gets on my nerves about this doll's hair texture ah just another one that i i just i want to like you i want to love you betty i really do but you're so difficult you know it's so difficult for me to style and work with i'm trying she's still not totally finished in my mind as far as customizing her goes and also her lip paint this like bright pink i'm not feeling it so i feel like i'm probably gonna end up doing a bunch of stuff to this doll just to try to revive her look change it up a little bit more to my liking but so far this is what I've gotten done with her at times what I'll end up doing is for this video I've got her hair all loose like this just to show you guys what I'm working with but I usually end up like tying her hair back something like this when I do end up styling her and wanting to put her on display but it's just like it's just so big I just I can't deal with it on this doll's face some dolls look great with big hair like my Reagan that I showed you guys but this one I just don't know D don't look right on her okay yeah Thais back there against the wall she looks amazing with huge hair it's just so delicious on her it looks amazing and I have no problem with her hair texture whatsoever I don't want to change it. I don't want to braid it. I just want her hair to stay the way that it is. But with her face, Thais can totally pull off that big hair. This one, on the other hand, uh, no. She looked like she's trying too hard, okay? So we got to get Betty's hair together. Tell me in the comments if you guys have tried anything different with your version of this doll, if you have her. Or if you have a doll with the same kind of hair texture like hers originally came with. What did you do with the doll's hair? If you have changed it. In fact, I'm kind of thinking maybe I should try to straighten it and see how that looks. Maybe it will lay flat for me. I don't know. I don't know if this doll has directional rooting or not. I didn't really bother to like look when I was styling her hair. But maybe it does and that's why it's just flying all over the place. If I do, then I will definitely update you guys on how she turned out. But that's what we're dealing with with this one. As far as the rooting is concerned, pretty well rooted. It's very full. I will say that this doll's hair doesn't have a bunch of gaping bald spots in the head. But if you move the hair around, obviously you're going to see more of the scalp than you would if it wasn't in these twists. Because the twists group the plugs together. So it's going to make more space in between. But still, it's a decent amount of hair that's on her head. So I don't really have to worry about too much scalp showing when I do style this doll's hair. Yeah, except for when it's parted like this. What in the hell? Oh, stop it, please. <laughs> she needs hair, Jesus. Curiosity got the best of me, so I do have to interrupt myself right quick to show you guys that I did take down her twist because I just wanted to see how her hair would behave once they were removed after having been in them for so long. I mean, I can't remember how long I've had this doll, but I know I've had her at least at least a year if not longer. I didn't brush the hair out, I just took the twist down. This is how the hair is looking and behaving. It is very stiff hair, it just kind of like goes wherever you place it and it doesn't move around. But remember when this doll was first deboxed, she did have a straight up afro hairstyle that was just flying kind of in every direction. So this level of tameness for this hair texture is a win in my book. And I actually do like it like this. Even though the hair is still quite big, I think she can totally 
totally get away with rocking this hair kind of poofy like this and I do want to further work on her face I want to give her some baby hairs new lipstick because I just don't think this bright pink works for her she's coming together so I'll be sure to keep updating you guys with her look once I figure out more stuff I want to do to her to make her look better but what do you guys think about the texture of this hair let me know in the comments okay so next we're gonna take a look at Elise Elise is very special to me. She was one of my Grail dolls. She's a Carnival doll. And she also has the face sculpt called Carnival. We do sometimes see this head sculpt referred to as the Leanne Rhymes head sculpt because that's actually the first doll that they use that sculpt on. More popular for people to call her Carnival. That's her. She does originally come with an open mouth. Carnival is a head sculpt that I tend to usually like even though the face does have an open mouth smile. And I do have a version of her on one of my favorite dolls in my collection, the FAO Shorts Barbie, with a side glance that I love just the way she is even with her teeth showing. When I was experimenting with closing up my doll's mouths, I thought I would try it with her just to see if she would look any better with her mouth closed. And honestly, I think that for her, she does look better with the teeth not showing. So if her sculpt looks different than the carnival dolls that you've seen or have, this is why. In her case, again, gigantic, big, huge, poofy, curly hair. The hair was beautiful. Very, very pretty hair. It was just too much volume for me to deal with at the time, so I decided I was gonna braid her hair up. I did the same thing with her hair that I did with Sharia's hair. It's about the same size in curls, and also because her hair is naturally very curly, the ends of the hair definitely just curled up on their own. You can tell from how long these braids are that her actual hair length, if you stretch it, is gonna come down so, so far. And she probably, like, it's braided now, but if it wasn't, it'd probably come down now right here. So if you were gonna straighten this doll's hair, you'd probably get tons of length out of it but I wasn't interested in doing that at the time if you do decide to box braid your doll's hair you can always unravel them guys and when you do unravel them the texture will change to a wavy texture so you could rock the doll's hair like that for a little while and then when you get tired of that you could even straighten it just to get more length out of the doll's hair it's very versatile the things that you can do with the doll's hair even after braiding it so don't think that once you braid it that's it you can just never change the hairstyle again so if you make the braids any smaller than this they're probably gonna be a lot harder and take longer to unravel but it just depends on the doll what look you're going for what size braids you want to give them when I do box braids on my doll's hair I don't part the doll's hair with like a comb and make it all exact like I would do on a person's head I just grab little small patches of hair that are about the similar size to each other and just braid away when it's all done they usually turn out pretty good so I don't really bother trying to worry about parting it you can't really part hair on a doll's head for box Box braids accurately anyways this doll was given edges that I drew on I don't know if you can see them very well but they're really small and she had a lot more makeup on her face but I ended up removing a lot of the makeup because she's got like really over-the-top party makeup originally but it was too much so I had to kind of get rid of some of it but overall I think she's a very pretty doll she's one of my, my favorite dolls actually I gave her a new body so she's on a made to move instead of her original body that she came with and here's how the hair looks when I'm pulling apart the hair from the scalp very minuscule amounts of scalp shows so I don't really have to worry about you know how I'm parting the doll's hair I can do different hairstyles with this braided look as well I can tie it up into a ponytail I can put it in a bun I can change the hairstyle up as I please I think this doll also came with a side part because I can kind of see here where it splits and the hair meets and I don't see that going on on the other side so Lastly, we're gonna talk about Tandy here. She is one of those styled by dolls. She's got the Cassandra head sculpt. I do have another sculpt like this whose lips I've closed. So it does work for this face as well if you decide you wanna remove the teeth. But for her, I just left her the way that she is because I don't mind her teeth showing. It's not too bad. I believe she's on her original body as well. This one came with a curvy body type. Who lot her hair. Okay, so she had this huge afro puff, right? And I think it had a side part the way that they styled it out of the box, but I don't remember for sure. She doesn't have any particular parts rooted into the head. Uh, she has like that afro hair texture. It's not the real soft, soft, smooth saran. I mean, you can see from the length of these braids how long her actual hair really is. And now imagine with the shrinkage how big her puff was. It was gymongous and I just, I could not 
figure out ways that I wanted to style the doll's hair so that it satisfied me. Also, sometimes what happens is it's not so much the doll's hair is hard to manage, but that I'll end up with dolls that have very similar hair textures. Like with the Afro Puffs, I think at the time when I got this doll, there was just a huge influx of dolls that were being produced with afros. Mattel was just going crazy with the afros. So a lot of the dolls that I had added to my collection around that time came with afro hairstyles. For some of them, I thought they looked really cute with the afros. And for some, I thought they were kind of redundant. So if I felt like I had too many dolls with the same hairstyle, then I would just pick some of the dolls to change the hairstyle so that I wouldn't have a bunch of dolls with the same look. And she happened to be one of the dolls that fell into that category, so she ended up with these braids. Even though I didn't really have a big problem with the afro that she came with, I think they look cute on her. And at the time, I didn't have any dolls that had blonde box braids, so I thought that it was like a cool thing to add. Even though the ends are kind of rough, I don't mind them because the hair is so long, it doesn't really take away from my ability to style the doll's hair. I haven't decided if I want to cut these down right to the bottom of the braid or not. I don't know, maybe I'll do it if I decide I'm just gonna keep her hair like this. But again, because I like to change my doll's look up so often, sometimes I just leave it because I'm thinking like, maybe I'll want to take these braids out and see how the doll's hair is looking. In fact, they've been in these braids for so long, I might actually take them out just to see how her hair looks with the waves that will have been embedded into the doll's hair texture because of the braided style. And this kind of saran, it's like kind of a uh, stiff. I think if I take these braids out, then it's very likely that the wavy texture will just stay like that for a while, which might be a cool look. So I might actually take these braids down. But for this one, she is a little bit scalpy. When I part her braids away from her head, I can definitely see her head is actually colored the same as her hair so it's not as noticeable from a distance but up close I can definitely see like a bunch of scalp in between these braids so that's a little bit annoying I don't really like that I mean what can I do about it but overall it's not so distracting that I can't get away with giving her the braids and keeping it styled this way and again because the braids are easy to maneuver I can change up her look give her different ponytail looks and things like that and it works just fine or I can just leave it down. This is another one where I don't always leave her hair down like this. I do tend to throw it into some kind of ponytail or a bun or something like that when I'm styling her hair to display her. So I do switch her look up a little bit with these braids. Overall, I'm satisfied with it. I like the braids better than the big poofy afro that she came with because to me, it was just taking up way too much space. And though it was pretty, I just was like, girl, I gotta like display you by yourself because there's no space on my display area when she's got her big poof going on and there's other dolls around her trying to get their shine too you know so, so it is what it is but i do have a bunch of dolls already that have afro styles that i like that i just leave alone because it works for them well i decided to interrupt myself here to show you guys how tandy's hair looks with all of her braids removed i was just too curious i wanted to see if the hair was the same as it was when i first got the doll before i braided it all up the braids actually stretched her hair so it's much longer than it looked when I first took her out of the box. And of course, as you see, her hair is still in its kind of crimped um, hair texture from the braids. It's not completely stretched. So if I was to straighten her hair, it would be a lot flatter and a lot longer than this. I probably won't be doing that though because the texture of this hair um, I think it is saran but this kind of texture it's very kinky and it's like it sticks to itself it doesn't really move freely so if I was to straighten this hair I feel like it would just be so stiff but you never know curiosity just always gets the best of me and I might end up doing it as an experiment just to see how the texture behaves in case I want to do this in the future with a different doll so far this is how it turned out it looks very full it's not as big and scary as it was when I first got the doll I kind of like it big like this but laying flatter so i might just keep her like this but we'll see if i do end up straightening it then i'll be sure to update you guys with her new look it does also camouflage her scalp a little bit better she does still have a few stray braids hiding between her hair it's still kind of you know kind of thin in the 
top of the head. I do have to be very picky about the way that I part her hair. But overall, I don't think it's a bad look for her. I think I might keep her like this for a little while. Okay, back to the show. Okay, so that's it for this video. In our next installment, we're gonna take a look at these guys and their details. These are all dolls that came with updos and intricate hairstyles. So we're gonna take a look at them and I'll show you the details of their hair. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're paying attention to your notifications so you won't miss it when that one goes up. And that's pretty much it today for our braided looks. So let's wrap this up, y'all. So I hope you guys have figured out if you're new here that I'm just the kind of person that's gonna tell you what I think, tell you the truth. I don't care about being PC. I don't care about people getting offended by the things that I say. I do care about genuine offense, but I don't care about people just being whiny crybabies because we have a lot of that online these days and I just can't take you serious. You sound crazy. It's okay for people to have a difference of opinion from each other. That's where I'm coming from. You gotta have the ability to just keep it real to hang out with me over here, okay? I I've lost people on this channel because they thought they were making a statement by running off because they didn't like something I said. And I'm always looking at them like, don't announce to me. If you're gonna leave, just go. Like, I don't need you to announce to me because I don't really care. And it's not that I don't care about your specific feelings, it's that the thing I'm talking about is not something that you should get so offended by that you feel like, oh, I can't even uh, um, have a conversation with this person because they don't think exactly like me. You know, I have friends that are different religions than me, some that have no religion. I'm not about to not be your friend because you don't believe in the same thing I believe spiritually. I have friends who think doll collecting is stupid. They think I'm wasting my time. I'm not about to cut you off because you think that you're entitled to your opinion. Just don't violate me, that's all. Just don't come to my house and break all my dolls or call police or call CPS and say, oh, this person's children are in danger because their mother is collecting dolls. You know, just don't interrupt what I'm doing. <laughs> that all, leave me alone. But you can think what you want to think. You can say what you want to say. I don't need to get offended because of it because it's your genuine opinion. And we're all allowed to have our own opinions. We're allowed to think for ourselves. Or did I miss something? Is that not a thing anymore? I don't know what the hell is going on in this country, but that's weird. And that's something that I think us as doll collectors definitely can relate to each other on is that through our dolls, we explore many different cultures that we might not really be exposed to in real life. Like I have dolls that represent to me all kinds of different cultures that I've never even come in contact with, you know? I know the most about my people, but I love to learn about the others too. When we do learn about other people, we sometimes are surprised at how much we actually have in common with them. We can learn from other cultures. Sometimes they do do things better than we do it. And why be so hard-headed and act like we know everything when we clearly don't, okay? So that's my little, um, what does that have to do with doll tube? I don't know, that's not the point. I'm just telling you what I think, okay? Can I say what I think? Oh, back to what I wasn't talking about. Wow, look at how curly my hair is. Y'all, I'm trying something new with my hair. I've never worn my hair like this. I don't know what possessed me to do it because I don't like my hair curly. I like to wear my hair straight, but it's such a hassle trying to keep my hair straight because it's naturally curly that I was like, I need some kind of happy medium. So I was like, let me just braid the whole thing up and see what happens. And this is what happened. So did I make a mistake? <laughs> handle it you're not going to offend me okay just let me know be like gypsy what the hell was you thinking or you can say you pulling it off either way i still love you okay so i'll see you guys in the next one i promise i won't be this hype and silly in the next one until i see you again me and my elise here want to remind you that you're watching broken dolly tv i'm gypsy you're not so let's just go and have a dolly day